<laughs> All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Wen Tao, and I'm going to be talking about some of our research that we're starting on de-identification in practice, where we're looking at professionals as end users. So um, to give some background, personal data, there's a lot of it. And the tools that enable us to analyze it and do things with it are readily available. And so de-identification is really important. It alters data such that it's harder to know, to know whom that data refers to, ideally preserving some expectation of privacy. And it's employed in many contexts, right? So it's been used in the US Census. It's used by companies and by health researchers. And it's sometimes used by computer scientists and social scientists like us for when we want to or need to publish data. Unfortunately, de-identification is in a bit of crisis right now. So traditional methods are often reversible. Previous work has shown that individuals can sometimes be pretty straightforwardly re-identified using just a small number of data points, none of which is uniquely identifying on its own. And more recent work has shown that if certain assumptions hold true about how a data set was de-identified, then it, is vulnerable to re it can be re vulnerable to re-identification even if it meets a common uh, metric of success known as k-anonymity. So one possible solution to this is differential privacy, which provides tunable guarantees against re-identification. Um, researchers are still trying to improve and measure the performance of differential privacy in different kinds of situations. So its proper role is still kind of being debated, as the US Census alluded to when they, talked, when they decided to hold off on using differential privacy uh, for one of their other surveys in 2025. Compounding some of these issues, um, de-identification poses usability challenges potentially as well. So there are many techniques and many different ways of applying them. A, in a study in 2015, researchers attempted to de-identify educational data while balancing privacy, with a goal of balancing privacy and utility. And they, they wrote a whole guide on it, but basically it's kind of difficult, uh, and for them it required um, a lot of trial and error of different kind of combinations and, and configurations of traditional de-identification techniques. So we see this as an issue that really lies at this intersection of privacy and usability. And in the middle, we have ordinary users who, you know, and their data, and they have no control over how their data is de-identified. Uh, and this is, this is really important, we think. So what we're trying to do is twofold. We're analyzing, doing qualitative coding on de-identification guides to understand how these guides are framing the outcomes and vulnerabilities of de-identification to practitioners, people who de-identify data. <clears throat> and we're also doing interviews, surveys, and or user studies with these practitioners to better understand their processes and their goals and their challenges, both generally and also in light of attacks on de-identification. Ultimately, one of our main goals is to enrich the exchange of ideas between practitioners of and critics of traditional de-identification processes. Um, so for example, by say identifying usability issues, we hope to both improve usability with say better guidance or open source tools, as well as potentially make a case for significant changes, more significant changes to the de-identification process. So for example, if some existing processes are you know, not only lacking guarantees against re-identification, but also are frustrating to follow, then maybe it's time to kind of cut down on, say, privacy theater and use differential privacy or some other process instead. Thank you for your time, and I'd love to hear any thoughts or questions that you have.